Yo, what's going on YouTube? This is Zach with Learn Cybersecurity. Today we are following up on our series of Let's Learn. And this series is hosted by The Comic Girl. And if you guys are familiar with the IT Career Questions Discord server, you guys can find her there. She basically runs the show there. And you guys can also follow her on Twitter at The Comic Girl. And you guys will see that in the video as well. This video is part two to learning Linux basics. If you've missed part one of this video, please go to the link in the description below. It'll take you over to the IT Career Questions YouTube channel and you guys can follow along from the very first video. The rest of this series will be continued on the Learn Cybersecurity channel because that's what this is all about. We're gonna help you learn the best that we possibly can by getting started with the very basics in many different technologies and eventually work our way up to some more advanced technologies and skills that you'll need to know getting into the cybersecurity field. For now, enjoy the video and take care. Hey everyone and welcome back to the Let's Learn series where this week we're continuing to cover Linux command line basics. So last week we covered the basics of navigating the command line as well as installing software like Terminator, which Terminator allows us to see multiple terminals in one window. If you haven't already watched last week's video or if you need a refresher, go check it out and come right back. Today we're going to be learning more about the command line, so let's just jump in. So we're going to start this off by opening up Terminator, which is what we installed last week. And again, the great thing about Terminator is that you're able to split it horizontally or split it vertically, the terminals, so you can have multiple terminals when you're working with it. So for instance, we'll look at some of these later, but if config can be pulled up here, and you can also pull up um, and you know list what documents you have and all sorts of other things. So it's just great to have these multiple terminals for working with multiple um, commands. So let's clear these out uh, and close these terminals. All right, so let's just... Okay, so I'm gonna be using Terminator going forward as my terminal. So you can use the other, the pre-installed terminal that's with Kali, or you can use Terminator. That's kind of up to you whether or not you wanna do that. So we're gonna continue and expand upon installing software. Um, one of the things that we need to do as we are using different tools and software is updating them or upgrading them. So what we're going to be doing is updating our repository and to do that we're going to use a control uh, a command called apt get which might look familiar from last time that we were doing it update Oop, update. So as you can see mine didn't take very long to run because I'm working on a new virtual machine but if you've been using yours for a while it might have a couple of updates that it needs to run. So now we want to look at upgrading our packages. The difference between apt-get update and apt-get upgrade is updating just updates the current packages that you have, whereas upgrading it actually installs newer versions of the packages. So to do this, it's pretty similar to the process we did before, except we're going to say apt-get apt -get upgrade. So this might take a while and your system might be unusable for a while and it's going to ask you whether or not you want to use additional space. You just say yes, this happens quite often with these um, updates and upgrades. So this is gonna take a bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward to when it gets done. All right, so my system just finished processing all the upgrades and it took it about 30 minutes and that's gonna vary depending on what kind of system you have. It's definitely recommended that you don't do this process unless you don't need your system for a while because your system will be unavailable for a bit. All right, now that that process is done and out of the way, let's move on. Now we're going to be looking at, uh, let's clear that out of the way. Now we're going to be looking at uninstalling software and removing it. And to do this, I'm just going to quickly make sure that Snort is installed, which we'll look at later on. So I'm going to quickly install that. Okay. And now that it's done, we can go ahead and install it. You have a couple options. The first is apt-get remove, and then followed by the name of the program you want to remove. Doing this, you'll see, will 
of course, ask you if you definitely do want to uninstall, which you can hit yes. All right, so now that that's done, you can look at that. I'm gonna quickly reinstall it so that I can show you the second method for doing it, which, yep, that was wrong. So that basically removes it, but it does keep the package located on the virtual machine. The other option that we have is what's called a purge. And a purge is basically clearing all of the documentation, all, any files that it has on there, it'll remove it. So instead of apt-get removed, we'll use apt-get purge, and then followed by the name of the system. It'll ask you if you want to continue, so you can go ahead and hit yes, and it'll begin this process. All right, and now it's done. So I'm gonna go ahead and just reinstall it real fast um, because we will use it later on, but down the road we can address that. Okay, and so it's reinstalled and we're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this out and we'll move right along. So I mentioned earlier about the if config command. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. So we enter that in and it starts displaying a bunch of useful information, but let's break it down since there's a lot to look at. Uh, the first thing you'll note is it's displaying a lot of information and very useful information about the active networks on the system. So we see that it displays the first wired connection with this ETH0, which stands for Ethernet0, or ETHO for short. And uh, Kali Linux starts counting from zero. If there's any more wired connections, it'll say ETH0, ETH1, ETH2, uh, so on and so forth. So next we'll see the IP address that's listed for the machine. For me it's 10.0.2.15. Here we have the net mask which is used to determine which part of the IP address is used to connect to the local network. So here we have the broadcast, or sometimes referred to as the bcast, which is used to send information to all IPs on the subnet. This next section shows the loopback, or local host, which we'll talk about in later videos. So let's look at some interesting things that the ifconfig command can do. Let's open it back up. And looking at it, we see that our IP address is, for this system, 10.0.2.15. Changing your IP address is something that comes in handy. So let's look at how to do that. So typing in if config etho, and then we're just gonna change it by one digit just to show that it can be done. Now, now that the system has returned nothing, which means that it had success in doing it. So let's double check that it managed to do it by running if config by itself again. And so now we see that the IP address originally was 10.0.2.15 and now is 10.0.2.4. And we can easily change it back just by bringing that last command up and typing in 15 instead of four. So that's really cool that we were able to do that because sometimes when you're hacking systems or working on things, you need to appear to be a specific IP address so that you can be given the access to what you're doing. One of the last things I want to show you this week is how to use your preferred text editor to edit documents, which will become really useful later on when we have to do that to configure different files. So the one I like to use is LeafPad. So I have previously, you can see here, created a document called test document. So to open it up in LeafPad, I'll say LeafPad and then test document. And you'll see it'll open it here in an external viewer. So now what we'll do is instead we'll edit it. So I remove the this is a text document and I'll add this is, oh, this is a really cool test document. And then we'll save that. I like to use control S to save it automatically and you can see that the little asterisk went away or you can just hit file and save. And then we can close that. And we can see the changes either by using LeafPad to open it again, or as we saw last week, we can use cat to read documents in the terminal. So we jumped around a bit, but we did learn quite a lot about using the Linux command line. If you have any suggestions with what you want to cover with this Let's Learn series, definitely let us know in the comments. Hit subscribe if you want to see when more of these videos are coming out. You can follow me at Tacoma Girl on Twitter, or join our community Discord where I'm always hanging around. And until next week, I'll see you next video.